Hello and welcome to another exam paper walkthrough. Um, today we're looking at a slightly different paper. Um, so uh, we are looking, uh, this is in preparation for the summer 23 series of exams. Um, and I've looked at specific revision papers. And this is a revision paper uh, produced by a company called Third Space Learning. Um, they produce uh, their specialist maths revision material. Um, and I've looked at this paper and I've weighed it up. And I think it's a very good paper. I've set this for my year 11s to do as uh, final prep for their exam. And this is just a walkthrough of the solution for this paper um, if you uh, you can uh, follow them on Facebook um, or uh, they've got their own YouTube channel I'm sure um, it's third space learning uh, very good set of papers right um, so we'll kick off um, straight away uh, if we look at the basic instructions from them an hour and 30 minutes paper uh, this is the foundation tier uh, this is from their set two uh, and having looked through it, it's, it's, it's a nice paper, uh, which is why I've chosen to do it. Uh, fairly standard uh, information, and we will start off. I'll do this video in chunks of about 10 questions, um, but we'll see how uh, time permitting that goes. Okay then, um, so question one, we're looking at uh, right as a percentage, uh, 7 tenths. Uh, so hopefully um, we'll go for... We'll go for this colour to start writing in. Um, so 70 tenths as a percentage, uh, that's going to be the same as 70 out of 100, uh, which is going to be 70%. Um, and it, uh, So that is just, uh, I won't quit, keep changing pen colour for these. Uh, that's a B1 mark. Uh, for question two, uh, write the following in order, uh, size first. Uh, so in this series, we're starting with minus 9, uh, minus 5, 0, four and eleven um, and we're looking at a b1 mark correct answer only right here's a list of numbers from the list write down a multiple of five so that's anything ending in a five or a zero so we've only got one uh, so we're looking at 15 for that uh, question four right uh, 433 correct to the nearest 10 what to the nearest 10 that's either going to be 430 or 440 and that number is closer to 430 Okay, right, 2 hours and 40 minutes in hours. So we're looking at 240 divided by 60, uh, which is going to be the same as 24 divided by 6. So that goes in exactly 4 times, so 4 hours. Oh, and I forgot to do my marking for 3 onwards. So we'll change colour. I'll try and change colour, but I don't want to lag the video too much. Uh, we're looking at B1, uh, B1, and for this one it is an A1. Okay, uh, question six then. <coughs> Lucy asked some of her friends to choose their favourite colour from red, yellow, green and blue. Bar chart show, uh, below shows their results. How many friends did Lucy ask? Um, so we need these totals. So we're looking at uh, four for red plus five for yellow plus two for green plus eight for blue. Uh, so I'm going to add these in pairs, that's 9, that's 10, so we're looking at 19. So she asked 19 friends. Uh, write down the mode, so that's the colour that was chosen the most, that would be, in this case, blue. Right, and that's it, so marks for that question then, <coughs> we're picking up uh, for the 19, it is uh, M1. And then an A1 for the 19. And then for part B, uh, blue is just a B1 mark. Okay, uh, question seven. Eloise goes to the shop. She wants to buy one box of cereal, two bananas for 45 pence each, and one bottle of milk. Milk comes in different sizes. Uh Okay, I'm a little bit... Oh, okay, right. Uh, I was struggling to get my head around that question. Right, she... milk comes in three different sizes. Eloise wants to buy the biggest bottle of milk she can. Ele... Uh, Eloise has five pounds. What is the biggest bottle of milk she can buy? Okay, so I need these totals first of all. So I'm going to do uh, £2.80. And to that, I need to add uh, 
2 times by 0 0.45, that would be the price of banana in pounds. So 2 is going to be plus 0 0.9. So I'm adding those together. Uh, that would give me... Uh, so she needs to spend £3.70 on the cereal and the bananas, which means that she has £5 minus £3.70. That means that she will have a spare £1.30 to spend on milk. So the biggest bottle that she can buy is going to be the £2 milk. What is the biggest bottle of milk she can buy? Uh, show how you decided. So uh, £1.30 left to spend on milk so two pints okay and um, so question seven uh, we are looking at an M1 for the attempt to do two pound eighty uh, plus two lots of forty five so uh, I will give myself that mark there. Um, and then we have, right, question seven. Uh, M1 further subtracting from five pounds. And then an A1 correct for correct. Correct answer following correct working. So A1 there. Okay then, uh, question 8, simplify. So um, we're collecting our A's together. 3 plus 1 plus 3 uh, plus 6 is going to be 10. So 10A. Expand. So 4 times by 2B would give you 8B. And then 4 times by 5 would give you 20. So 8B plus 20. And then for the final one, expand. C times by C gives you C squared. And then C times by minus 3 gives you minus 3C. Okay, and the marks are awarded for this question four. Um, so we're looking at A1, A1, and an A1. So three A marks. Right, and uh, question nine. So Ryan has a party. There were 60 guests. One sixth of the guests were men. Three tenths of the guests were women. The rest of the guests were children. How many children attended Ryan's party? Um, so, uh, one si so if we do it like this, one six times by 60 is going to give you, uh, well, uh, 60 divided by six would give you 10. So we've got 10 men. We've then got three tenths times by 60 is going to be equal to, uh, 18. So we've got a total of the rest of the guests are children so that would be in effect 60 minus uh, 10 plus 18 so that's going to be 60 minus 28 which is going to give us 32 i'm going to call that method one and i'll just do the second method right um we'll go purple <coughs> so for the second method i could have just looked at adding these together first of all so i could have said that one six uh, plus three tenths is going to be equal to lowest common multiple is going to be 60 uh, which works quite nicely actually uh, so that's going to be 6 plus 18 so we're ending up with uh, 6. it's going to be 10 plus 18 so it's going to be 28 over 60 so that means that with the fraction that are left is going to be 1 minus 28 over 60 which would be 32 over 60, which means that there would be 32. Right, I'll call that method two, just looking at the fractions. Doesn't, um, the fact that the denominator was 60 was quite nice. Right, um, so marks for that then, we have got, let me bring up question nine. Right, um, M1 for 10 men or 18 women seen. So uh, M1 there. Subtracting from 60. So M1 there. And then A1 for the 32. Uh, they haven't got a version in the mark scheme using fractions. But similarly, I go M1 there. M1 there. Okay. Um, and question 10. So. Uh, 
plot the point with a coordinate of 4, 1 and label this point C. So 4, 1 would be that coordinate there and we label it C. Um, write down the coordinate of the midpoint of AB. So we've got, you can kind of do it by inspection. Um, so we've got 0, 1. So um, I would probably say that that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, we could have uh, looked at the two coordinates. And then find the midpoint of those. So the midpoint of 2 and minus 2 is 0. The midpoint of 3 and minus 1 is 1. So that's kind of a second version. Uh, but I think by inspection it is perfectly fine for this question. Works quite nicely. Um, so answer for question 7 then. Uh, B1 for correct answer only. For And C is marked in that place. Um, and then second it is just an A1. Right, question 11. <coughs> uh, a bag contains yellow counters, green counters, and green counters only. The ratio of yellow counters to green counters is 2 to 5. The counter is picked at random. What is the probability that the counter is yellow? Um, so uh, the ratio of yellow is 2. So we've got two parts out of the total number of parts, which would be 7, so 2 sevenths. Uh, part B, there are 10 yellow counters in the bag. How many green counters are there in the bag? Uh, so if I go for a very, very basic ratio table, yellow to green, and we've got 2 to 5, and we're told that there are 10 yellow counters, so we've times by 5. So times by 5 on the other side gives us uh, 25. Right, and marks are awarded for, or marks are awarded as, uh, gosh, right, um, let's do that again. So marks are awarded for an A1 for two sevenths, and then we've got uh, M1 for showing 10 divided by 3, or a suitable first step. So I'm going to suggest that's my suitable first step, and then A1 for 25. Okay, uh, question 12. Here is an isosceles triangle. The perimeter of the triangle is 24 centimetres. Work out the value of x. Uh, so the perimeter is all the way around the outside. So x plus x plus 6. So in other words, 2x. We have 2x plus 6, and that's equal to 24. So my steps are keeping it balanced. I need to minus 6 from both sides of the equation, giving me 2x is equal to 18. And then divide both sides by 2 would give me x is equal to 9. Right. Um, marks for that then. We have got... I'm looking at the wrong question. There we go, question 12. Um, we have got an m1 for 24 minus 6. Um, or setting it up as an equation. So I'll give my... Mark for setting it up as an equation, and then A1 for solving it. Okay, question 13. Work out 35 times by 27. Uh, so I'm going to use a formal column multiplication for this. I tend to always put my larger number on top. I'll do a, I'll do a second grid afterwards just to check my answer. So 7 times by 5 would give me 35. 7 times by 3 would give me 21, plus the 3 would give me 24. 0 in the units column now, 2 times by 5 would give me 10, and then 2 times by six would, uh, two times by 3 would give me 6, plus the remaining 1 would give me 7, add the numbers together, 5 plus 0 is 5, 4 plus 0 is 4, and then 2 plus 7 is 9. Um, and then second method will go green. So I could have used grid to do this, so split it as a 30 and a 5, and a 20 and a 7. So two times by six, uh, two times by three is six with two zeros. Five times by two is ten with one zero. Seven times by three is twenty-one with one zero, and then seven times by five is thirty-five. We'll add up our rows in this direction, so that's going to give me uh, seven hundred plus two hundred and forty-five. And then add those two numbers up would give me five, four, nine. So I've done that two ways, so I'm going to be very confident of my answer. Nine, four, five. 
Okay, and the, the marks are awarded for normally going to be a method mark, uh, method mark, or method mark, and then a one mark. Okay, question 14. Graham says there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram, therefore 4,000 kilograms is equal to 4 grams. Uh, explain Graham's mistake. Uh, so it should have divided... So he's done it the wrong way around. How do I explain that properly? Uh, so... 4,000 kilograms is equal to 1,000 times by 4,000, which is equal to 4 million grams, or 4 kilograms is equal to 4 times by 1,000 grams which is equal to 4,000 grams so um, his mistake really is he converted the wrong way around did the wrong way around Right, um, he is divided by a thousand rather than multiplied by a thousand, so B1 only for that. Right, uh, question 15, Jacob asks 40 friends to tell him which animals they like best from cats, dogs and rabbits. Okay, so we've got two-way table and we need to put in some of the information. Um, so all I'm going to do is extract information from the question as kind of my stage one. So we've got 40 friends, which has already been entered. Uh, seven of the 18 of his female friends said cats. So that means that we can do female friends of cats and 18 as the total females. Twice as many females as males said rabbits. So I'll come back to that. 40% of his friends said dogs. Um, and so those are the only straightforward numbers that I can put in. What I'm going to do is then, so 40% of his friends. So I'm going to do 40% um, of 40 uh, is going to be 16. So 16 of his friends said dogs. So dog total would have been, actually I'm going to change colour just to show that this is a kind of a different level. So 16. Um, and three eighths of his friends said cats, so three eighths times by 40 is going to be equal to uh, three times by five, which would be 15. So I'm going to put 15 in the friend said cat, so 15 can go there. And now I'm going to start to fill in some of the other values. I can't really do that one just yet. Uh, so we'll go for a different colour, we'll go purple. Right, so I can say that if 15 of his friends said cats and 7 were female, that must mean that 8 were uh, male. Uh, we can also say that currently this adds to 31 and it needs to add to 90, so we've got to have a 9 there. Um, and I can actually enter this bit here. Twice as many females as males said rabbits, so that must mean that that's six and three and then if we carry on that must be 22 uh, our value here this currently adds up to 11 it needs to add up to 22 so that must be an 11 there and then we can check this two ways so this currently adds up to four plus six is 13 so that should add up to five and also 16 minus 11 is five so fairly confident with all of those values right Marks are awarded for this then. Let's pick a colour I've not marked with, uh, written with. So let's go green. Let's go that green. Okay, um, so M1 for values for cats and dogs totals. Cats and dogs totals. Okay, so that gives me my M1. 
uh, M1 for at least four values correct. I'm just double checking that all of my values are correct. Uh, so M1 and then A1 for all values correct. Okay, uh, question 16 then. Sam is making beans on toast for lunch. She uses two slices of bread, 250 grams of beans and 40 grams of cheese. Bread contains 110 calories per slice. Be baked beans cost 90 calories per 100 grams. And cheese contains 400 calories per 100 grams. Calculate the total number of calories in Sam's lunch. Okay, so we've got... Um, So uh, bread contains, so we've got two slices of bread, so 2 times by 110 is going to be equal to uh, 220 uh, calories. Uh, 90, so this is, uh, so in effect what I'm doing is 250 divided by 100 times by 90. So that's the same as uh, 2.5 times by 90. Uh, which is going to be 180 plus 45, so that's going to be uh, 225. Um, and then cheese, we've got 40 grams of cheese, so in effect we're doing 40 divided by 100 times by 400. Okay, so that's going to give us 160 calories due to cheese so my total figure then i'm doing 220 plus 225 plus 160 so five so i make it 605 calories right let's go to the mark scheme then so they are suggesting uh M1 for showing 220, so M1 picked up here. M1 for 90 times by 2.5 is 225, so M1 there. M1 for the calories in cheese, and then an A1 for my answer. Okay, uh, question six, 17 then. Right, to work out an estimate. So an estimate in GCSE, we always tend to um, go to one significant figure or you won't tend to, well, you won't get marks for going more accurate. So I'm gonna go 200 times by 90 divided by 50. I'm gonna say that 200 divided by 50 is four. So it's four times by 90, which is gonna give me 360. Okay, and three marks awarded for that. They are awarded for <coughs> um, M1 for 290 and 50 seen. So that I would probably call that processing mark, but we're going to method mark here. Uh, M1 for, it's saying 200 times by 90, so they're suggesting working out the numerator. Um, I would say for a stage within the calculation. And then an A1 for the 360. Um, and I'm just actually going to rewrite that. So if I put 360 there, just just to make it clear that my answers are on my answer line. Right, then it's cut out. There we go. Okay, question 18. First five terms of an arithmetic sequence. Write down an expression in terms of n for the nth term of this sequence. So an expression really means no equal sign. Uh, so constant difference between these terms then is four. So my expression for the nth term needs to start with a four n. What do I need to do to four to get to three? We need to subtract one. So that's my nth term. Okay, is the number 102 in the sequence? So for it to be in the sequence, um, we need to is 4n minus, can 4n minus 1 be equal to 101? Um, so that was a kind of a question. So 4n minus 1, so I need to add 1 to both sides. So that would be 102. 4n is equal to 102. So n would need to be equal to uh, 25 and a half. So that's not a whole number. So no. 
So I'll say that no as and must be an integer. Which is a fancy way to say a whole number. Okay, right. I'm going to switch my backup pen. I might need to replace the battery in that. Right, so, um, and for this one, let me go. So, so it's M1 for 4N and then an A1 for the correct expression. Um, and then we've got, so it's an M1 for 4n minus 1 is equal to 101 scene. So we go m1 and then a1. Okay, question 19 then. Shape A is reflected in the line x is equal to 1 to give shape B. Shape B is reflected in the x-axis to give shape C. Uh, describe the single uh, transformation that maps A onto C. Um, so uh, the more you do these, the more the more used to them you'll be. Um, so I will state it first of all. So that's going to be a rotation of 180 degrees in the point in the point um, one zero. Uh, if I wanted to show that though, so. Uh, so I'll show you in full detail though. So shape A is reflected in the line X is equal to 1 to give shape B. So that's the line X is equal to 1. So if I reflect it in that line, that point will that point will move to there. That point will move to there. And then that point will move to uh, 2, 4, 2, 4. So that point will move to there. So that's going to be shape B. And then if we're reflecting in the x-axis, this is the x-axis. So let's just reflect it in that line. So that would be shape C. And then you can kind of see straight away by the orientation that we've gone from um, it pointing in that direction. So if you kind of imagine pointing that way it's going to point in that way so it's been reflected 180 degrees and the point that it's been reflected by is where there's these two mirror lines join up which is the coordinate one zero okay um so right they are suggesting that it's an m1 for a valid attempt to reflect the shape um, so M1, then we're going A1 for rotation, and then about uh, one mark for 180 and about the point, so A1. Okay, question 20, expand and simplify. So we multiply multiplying out a double bracket, so X times by X gives us X squared x times by minus 8 gives us minus 8x, minus 3 times by 8 gives us minus 3x, and then minus 3 times by minus 8 would give me plus 24. Simplify the middle two terms, so that's going to give me x squared. Minus 8 plus minus 3 would give me minus 11x, and then plus 24. Okay, next we're saying solve. Okay. So it's not the same equation. It's very similar, though. Uh, so I'm going to factorize it, first of all. Uh, so to factorize it, it needs to go into two brackets. And I'm looking for two numbers that would uh, multiply together to make the last term, minus 12, and that would add together to make the middle term, which is 4. And that works out over here. You can see that minus 8 times minus 8 gives you plus 24, and then minus, eight, minus 3 minus 8 gives you minus 11. Uh, so the numbers that I'm looking for here then are going to be one's negative, one's positive, and the uh, the positive number is the larger. So I'm going six and minus two. So I've got x plus six and x minus two. Right. So we're, we're most of the way there. Our final stage is for two things to multiply together to make zero. One of them must be equal to zero. 
to make that bracket 0, x must be equal to minus 6. And to make that bracket 0, x must need to be equal to 2. So that's my two values. x is equal to minus 6, or, or and x is equal to 2. Right, marks for that question then. So, for part A, we pick up uh, M1 for three of the four terms correct, so, and then A1 for the correct. For part B, um, so it's an M1 for a factorized version, where, and you can have your pluses and minuses the wrong way around, still pick up that first method mark second method mark for it being correct, and then an A1 mark for the correct two values. Okay, and I will stop the video there, and I will start a fresh one shortly.